Hi guys, this is Frenchy and uh, I'm really happy to come back to YouTube because uh, I had like such uh, terrible weeks where I was completely sick and uh, overworked. So I'm really happy to just sit down and make a proper uh, YouTube video today. Uh, it's really nice to uh, find you back guys. I changed my setup because uh, right now I'm like traveling to Vietnam. I am in Vietnam for a job uh, and uh, I had to bring uh, some of my equipment over here, you know, to grade. So it's pretty fun. Otherwise, I wanted to just uh, have a tutorial with you guys about DaVinci White Gamut because I think it's a very important subject and uh, it's a very important thing for you to master. Uh, as like for me, it really helped my grades uh, and it really helped my workflow. It released a lot of uh, weight, you know, for me and uh, the, the frustration of me not uh, achieving the looks that I wanted. Uh, so what is DaVinci White Gamut? It's a, a color space where uh, you can uh, work uh, in your timeline. The advantage of DaVinci White Gamut is a broader color space than Break 709. Uh, which like permits you to uh, have more room for highlights, more room for shadows, more rooms for colors, uh, which could be very interesting in some of your grades. It's very important to uh, talk about this and um, show you how we are doing it. Have fun with the tutorial and uh, I see you next week. Uh, so I wanted to make a tutorial for uh, DaVinci White Gamut because uh, a lot of you asked me to um, uh, just like show you my workflow with DaVinci White Gamut, uh, which is, I think, uh, very interesting because um, it's a color space that permits you to do a lot of things. So um, there's two ways to use DaVinci White Gamut. There's a way of uh, project level and there's a way of uh, CST. Um, so I'm going to show you the two methods uh, and uh, show you the method that I prefer. Uh, and we're going to grade uh, together uh, just a bit, you know, with uh, DaVinci White Gamut. So um, for the first method, uh, the project level, you're going to go to your wheel here. Uh, this is the project settings and go to your color management over here to use normally DaVinci White Gamut you're gonna go to DaVinci YRGB color manage and uh, as we saw uh, on the video of uh, the beginner tips uh, uh, color space transform uh, I mean color management um, we can uh, uncheck the automatic color management and you're gonna go to custom so in custom, we're going to have like all the um, features that we can uh, use to have like the perfect uh, column manage workflow. What I want to do actually is uh, we're going to do a little test um, to see the advantage of DaVinci White Gamut first. So um, I want you to do this test with me. Uh, we're going to just uh, put our input color space uh, to the camera uh, the, the project has been shot on. So for this one, what I have right now, it's a ARRI Log C3. And uh, timeline color space, then uh, I want for the test to show you, uh, we're going to put it in uh, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Um, I can leave the SDR at 100 and we're going to put uh, the Rec. 79 Gamma 2.4 for output color space. I hit save and I have a color manage workflow. We are in Rec. 79 Gamma 2.4 uh, color space right now. What I explained in the intro of the video uh, with the graph is um, DaVinci White Gamut has a broader color space than uh, Rec. 709 because thanks to this, we're gonna have more room to create our colors. To make this experience, we're gonna use color uh, space aware tools. 
Color space aware tools are the curves, the HDR wheels, the color wrapper and the keying. Why we are not using for example the leaf gum again is just like because this tool is not color space aware and has been designed only like for uh, Rex 09. So uh, just to show you the effect actually of um, uh, Rex 09, a change between Rex 09 Gamma 2.4 to uh, uh, DaVinci Y Gamut. Um, it will be uh, more uh, impactful when I use color space aware uh, tool um, so you can really see the difference. So here I'm going to grab my curves and go uh, to a clipping area which is like uh, yeah, something, something like this. Uh, this is a bit clipping. Okay, so now we are clipping in uh, my highlights. Okay. We are going to come back to um, our project settings, color management, and we're going to change the timeline color space to DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci White Gamut, which is here. DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. Uh, you're going to see the timeline working luminance is going to change uh, automatically to HDR uh, 1000. Uh, you can leave it like this. Uh, it doesn't affect anything. Uh, you can hit save and you're gonna see what happened in my graph is actually my clipping came down and uh, I'm not clipping in the highlights anymore. So for example, you know, I come back to my curve and I have more room actually to uh, bring up my image, to bring up uh, the luminance of my image. So this is how you set uh, DaVinci Y Gamut Intermediate uh, in your project level. So just to uh, see again together, we go from the camera color space, uh, Ari Loxy 3 for me, um, to the timeline color space. So we want a broader color space to work uh, inside our timeline, which is DaVinci Y Gamut Intermediate. And we want our output color space to um, match our display that like we are working on which is like the rec 709 gamma 2.4 for most of the display okay so um when you set this you are ready actually to work in a da vinci white gamut um, color space this is the project level now we're gonna do uh the node level which actually is my favorite uh, method because you have so much room actually to uh, handle your your color space so to do that you're going to go to davinci yrgb and you're going to change your timeline color space to davinci y gamut intermediate and output color space we want a rec 709 gamma 2.4 okay so i hit save and my timeline is not color managed anymore. To color manage this, I'm gonna just uh, put my node label. I'm just gonna put in and out. So in, we're gonna go to color space, transform in the effects, drop it in in. So same as what we were doing on the project level, our input color space would be um, uh, Ari Y Gamut 3 and Ari log C3 and uh, our output color space would be DaVinci white gamut and DaVinci intermediate okay so we we can leave everything like that we go to out take our color space transform drop it and put our input color space to uh, DaVinci White Gamut, take, 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 DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci, DaVinci Intermediate. Um, I am on my laptop, my PC laptop. I'm so sorry. It's like really hard to uh, handle everything because normally I'm, my big station is a Mac. So then I have like so much space. Here is my tiny PC laptop. So I'm, I'm sorry if I'm a bit slow. Um, so output color space, then it's going to be Rec 709, Rec 709 and 
uh, gamma 2.4 if we want to go to uh, a display that is gamma 2.4 okay so here we have exactly the same uh, color that we uh, had on the project level okay uh, so why i love this method it's because if i want to jump uh, around color space i have more possibilities to do it with nodes than a project level the project level the problem is it's already embedded in the project which like i can't really use my nodes to uh, jump in other color spaces so uh, what i can propose to you is actually making a grade where actually i jump to another color space to make my grade while i still benefit from the da vinci white gamut so to do that we're going to do a sort of a filmic grade with um, our footage over here okay so to do this as i want to jump to another color space which is the Cineon log uh, to uh, use my film look um, I'm gonna go to my out uh, node so I take my out node I go to effects and I'm gonna change my output gamma to Cineon film log okay so when I'm done that I can create a node here we're gonna call that uh, film print emulation okay and go to my lot and go to my film looks okay so when i'm in my film looks i can just like drop my lot on it check what i want so i'm just like viewing and what is nice is uh these lots are outputting in rex 709 which like uh is in line with the display we are broadcasting our grade on okay so uh, I'm just gonna take, you know, the classic uh, Kodak 2383 D65. I just double click it, add it, okay? And to grade inside a DaVinci white gamut color space in a node level, we're gonna grade in between the in and the out, okay? So, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna do what i do normally so i create a parallel that is fed by the in okay so i'm gonna do first my uh lgg okay so uh, lgg i'm just gonna go a bit of less lift so i'm just gonna raise my lift and uh, go down with my gain okay go down with my gamma a bit and seems fine and now i'm just gonna use the hdr wheels which is in this case very useful because uh hdr wheels are uh, wheels that are color space aware which like will work very well with a da vinci white gamut uh, color space so uh, i'm just gonna go down in light because i find him very hot here i'm just gonna go down okay and uh i think i'm fine with that yeah i think i'm fine with that and what we're gonna do uh, is i think i'm just gonna create a node after lgg so alt s and uh, I'm just gonna do the temperature because I find him a bit uh, hot. So I'm just gonna go to my temp and decrease to have like something a bit even. Yeah. Where actually, like, as he is like colder, he pops out more from uh, the background. Okay. So now that I've done my primaries, okay, I go to my secondaries and uh, i'm just gonna do a, a tiny color wrapper tiny color wrapper for the skin and just like maybe maybe have a, a bit more a boosted skin but yeah like this is this is like what i would do like this is before this is after yeah 
I like the skin like this before, after. Okay, so uh, then like I'm almost done with my look. If I want to have this filmic look, uh, what I can add is actually a vignette around uh, this guy. So what I'm going to create is uh, I'm going to create this after my film lot, uh, after my FP. Uh, I'm just going to um, hit uh, Alt S and create a vignette around him. So I don't want to raise him in the vignette. I don't want to put highlights in the vignette because I already uh, tamed down the highlights and I don't want it to come up and uh, make him so uh, so hot. So what I'm just going to do is having like a vignette so a bit darker areas around him okay i'm just creating the power window here and i'm going to hit this button that would like take everything around the vignette but nothing inside like this okay so then to have this effect we're just going to go to editable splines uh, click on the edit editable splines and just have a gentle vignette so this is very gentle this is what i like um so you just disable it will look like that and uh, enable it will look like this i like this kind of vignettes because it brings a bit more depth to the image by um bringing the attention in into the subject okay I'm just going to label that vignette, okay? And uh, this is actually like how I would grade um, maybe uh, my filming grade, <laughs> my film look. Because uh, the advantage of DaVinci White Gamut is just like I have so much room uh, for my highlights and my shadows which like uh, really help me to create uh, very unique looks. So uh, that's why I think it's worth to um, have a conversation and um, me showing you uh, how it works. Uh, so I, I hope it helps. Um, I mean, if you have any suggestion for other videos, drop it in the comments. Uh, I would re be very glad to um, uh, read this. And uh, yeah, I see you next week. See you guys.